Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Ardeal. I am a certified Body Talk practitioner with the International Body Talk Association. And today we get to speak with Lisa Morris. Lisa, thank you so much for being with us. You are a certified Body Talk instructor, an advanced certified Parama Body Talk practitioner, and you also teach Body Talk Access, Body Talk Fundamentals. You're originally out of Napa, California, and today we get to speak with you live from Costa Rica. So thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us on the panel of Body Talk experts, Lisa. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's nice to be here. <laughs> Lisa, let's just dive in. How were you introduced to Body Talk? Actually, it was really interesting. I was doing a, a, a conglomeration of different energy uh, modalities, techniques uh, for a long time mainly based in shamanic principles. Um, I had studied with a shaman for a couple of years and I actually sent one of my clients into a healing crisis and he was very angry and threatened to sue and while he didn't believe in the work when he threw his rotator cuff out after a session um, he blamed me for, for the pain and so um, I had to, had to take a serious look at what I was doing. At the time, I was living in um, Calistoga and had a little uh, room that I practiced in in my vineyard. And I just didn't think doing this woo-woo stuff with energy medicine was worth risking my little farm for. So I basically had decided to quit doing energy medicine. And a dear, dear friend of mine... Jack Bartello called and said, have you heard of Body Talk? And I'm like, no, I haven't, but you know what? I think I'm going to shift gears and change my focus here and just stick with farming. And um, he said, no, 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 Lisa, if I were seeing clients still, I would be practicing Body Talk. His wife, and he and his wife had just taken modules one and two uh, with Dr. Veldheim and um, you know, I have enough respect for him, I listened. And so I looked it up online and I found the only body talk instructor in California, Betty Nelson, uh, up in Grass Valley. And so I called her and asked if I could have a session and so that I could get a feel for what the work was like. And I went up and I asked if she would do the session out loud so that I could hear, you know, what was going on. And she kept talking about priority priority. Is this a priority? Is that a priority? And I thought for a minute, I'm like, wow, that was the missing piece for me because I always had an agenda to heal people and make them feel better. And if I had had the consciousness of the priority when I worked on this gentleman, I probably would have heard from his innate wisdom or the innate wisdom in the field that it wasn't a priority to remove the anger that he was carrying for his father in his left shoulder and that I probably should have left it alone. And um, from that moment on I was hooked. I was like, sign me up and fortunately she was teaching a class within a couple of weeks. So I came back up, I took uh, modules one and two, this was in 2002. Um, took modules one and two and back then we didn't have a lot of requirements about prerequisites and time frames for studying the work and by the end of 2002 actually yeah by the end of 2002 I'd gone through all of the modules I was so jazzed to have found this amazing work and I really thought in my mind that there was a huge piece of, of learning that I needed from module 9 and that that was really the work that I was doing previously. So I flashed through all the modules and got to my, went up to Salt Lake City uh, to do um, module nine with Marita. And I realized that I really missed a lot. And so I spent all of 2003 monitoring and going back over all of the courses and um, taking my time. So that's my story, yeah. I love that story. That story speaks to so many different levels of body talk. So let's let's talk about energy and intuition, Lisa, and how eloquently body talk merges those two. You talked about the priority. Can you speak to that a little further? Well, that was the big challenge for me. I've always been incredibly intuitive and, um, uh, you know, that knowing what you know without knowing why you know it. 
Uh, and so for me, when I started learning body talk, the whole left brain challenge of understanding the chart, the protocol chart that's behind you there, and um, you know, needing that map was was very difficult for me. And I kept trying to figure out shortcuts and why did I need that? And I was already getting the information intuitively. Why did I need to go through section one, section two, blah, 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 right? But then I came to understand pretty early on that the intuitive uh, information that I was getting, while it wasn't incorrect, might not have been where I needed to go as the priority. And I was, as I said, I was really into this priority. And that Sometimes the intuitive piece, let's say, you know, you're working on a toxic liver. Um, if you listened and take the time step by step by step, by the end of the session, the liver might not have come up, but the problem has solved itself because of the other links that came up, you know, in the session. And so I really got that very strongly. It's like, Something can be screaming, pick me, pick me, pick me. But if it's not the priority, you don't go there. And so I had to learn to quiet my intuition, ask it to work in harmony with this protocol chart. And that then in the end resulted in a huge safety net for me. And that is actually what gave me the ability to stay in practice and to continue to see clients. I had that safety net that I had not had before when I was just operating on my intuition with the tools that I had. So the dynamic between the two is, is I think, really the powerful part of body talk is having that left brain protocol chart and dancing, having it dance with your intuition and coming up with things that, you know, that only the body can tell you, only the client's body can tell you and unique in every case, right? So, I mean, you've heard before, three or four people could present with diabetes and their sessions will be completely different because their pathway to diabetes is completely different. Their story, their inner weaving and so, it really is, you need to rely on that dance between the anatomy and physiology of the body, the anatomy and physiology of the chart, and your intuition. What an eloquent way you just described that. It's just gorgeous. Um, what types of people now then, Lisa, come to see you in practice? Can you share some session stories? Well, you know, most of my work seems to be centered around women, although I do have men clients. Um, I tend to have a lot of um, uh, more of the emotional work, consciousness work, um, uh, kind of clients, uh, people who are looking to take their next step in life. I have many people who say, I just want to find my joy again. and. Um, so many, obviously, many multi layers to to that, um, but it's mostly women that are, you know, anywhere from thirty to sixty, looking for a deeper meaning and a di different experience in life. And um, while most clients come to, to in the early beginning of my practice, most people that I attracted um, were just coming to get out of pain whether it be physical pain or emotional pain or mental anxiety and pain. And then, you know, once they felt better, they wouldn't come back. And, um, and then it started to deepen. My practice after I started teaching, I think, um, actually started to deepen and people would come and, and they would stay for long periods of time and come back every, you know, two to three months for a session tune-up. Um, and I had many clients who would, I had three clients, have three clients who have been with me since the beginning and continue to have sessions. So that's 13 years. And they truly are completely different people. I mean, their testimonies are just really pretty amazing. At that point, body talk isn't a, a, a modality for getting you out of pain. It's actually for transforming your life. And it becomes a spiritual practice. And you live your life 
with what's the priority in this moment as opposed to the priority in the body to get it out of pain. And I adore those clients who really want to dive deep and using body talk to dive deep. Yeah, I love getting body talk over the years since 08. For me, it's just like how much further can we go? What's next? What else can we address, <laughs> right? It's so exciting. And exactly. so um, can you speak to your life before and after body talk? Do you still um, farm and incorporate your love of nature and the land, Lisa? Yes, absolutely. That's actually why I'm in Costa Rica. I am project manager on a biodynamic permaculture farm. Uh, where we're raising medicine, we're growing medicine. And um, I do body talk on the plants, I do body talk on the people, um, on the whole matrix. And um, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, there isn't anywhere in life that body talk doesn't show up and is not appropriate for whatever I'm experiencing. So yeah, I'm actually, my priority right now, although I am still teaching, and I do see clients twice a week here in Costa Rica and quite a few distance clients uh, a day a week. Um, my main focus right now is on organic farming and putting out uh, some medicinal teas. Can you yeah. speak to Body Talk for Plants, Lisa? What does that involve? What does that look like? What, how do the plants respond? Um, pretty amazing, actually. I was uh, right when I came into Body Talk. Uh, we had had previously a plant talk protocol, and um, John, Dr. Veldheim, and Jim Connolly um, co created a pretty amazing protocol chart with the plant um, uh, body anatomy and physiology. And um, I was not able to take that course. They actually stopped teaching it just a few months after I got into Body Talk. Um, but I was fortunate enough to get a copy of the protocol chart. And I have talked to enough people, Dr. Veldheim included, about how it works. You know, how the, the working with, say, a crop, finding the matrix holder for the crop, treating that and watching the entire field change. And I actually got into that more in the when I had the vineyard um, because Jim Connolly had worked a lot with the vineyards. And I, my vineyard was 120 years old when I bought it. It had been neglected for over 10 years. And I literally had to use a chainsaw to prune these old wagon wheel vines, Zinfandel vines. And so at some point I went into the vineyard and identified the matrix holder. And the production in this old vineyard was about two tons per acre. Most people were like, are you crazy? Why don't you rip that out? It's like not producing hardly anything. And I'm like, yeah, but there's wisdom here. There's wisdom in these old vines. And so um, I identified the matrix holder did a session, did probably a series of five sessions on the vineyard. And within two years, we had turned the production around to six tons per acre, which really is miraculous for that old of a, a, vine, a vineyard. It just it doesn't happen. And so, um, of course, I attribute it to body talk because that's really the only thing that was happening there. We were organically farming. We were putting um, turkey manure uh, onto the vine. To, to the vines, and um, that was about it, you know, and, and they didn't need water anymore. Their roots were so established, and um, in Calistoga, there's plenty of water uh, deep in the soil. So really, all I did was body tuck, and um, it turned around. Now, here, it's a little bit different. Um, it's the same theory, working with whatever, but I only, I, my main tea is guanabana. It's a healing tea that is grown here in the tropics. And I only had two trees. And so I did a session on the one tree that we call grandmother, um, which all the seeds we've propagated for the additional trees that are going in this year. We have 50 more trees going in. And so I did the session on her. And when we planted the seeds, when we propagated the seeds, it was really miraculous to see. I think I had a hundred percent take on the propagation. Not one seed didn't take. 
and um, that's pretty amazing. I mean, I've been a farmer for a long time. Usually, you get you know seventy percent, eighty percent yield uh, when you plant from seed, but I had a hundred percent yield off of those seeds. So, and I attribute that to the session that I gave to the grandmother. Yeah. I hope you're writing a, a book, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says I should keep a blog, but you know, I'm, I'm too busy I'm not that doing techie. the work. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite part about Body Talk, Lisa? Can you pick something out to share? Well, I think as we just have talked about, the universality of it, it the fact that it can be used anywhere. Um, you know, but when I was still in Napa, I was doing a lot of work with corporations, the matrix work of in corporations. I had one client there. I still have the client. I do some distance work for them. But... It started out that I came and did um, a clearing uh, of his business and um, uh, combined body talk with some of my shamanic practices to clear out some cursed energy from the Indians that had been left uh, in this particular building he was in. We had an incredible experience where his business completely turned around and um, as did many things in his life and so that then went to doing sessions for he and his family, uh, his wife and his children, and again had fabulous results with that. He then asked if I would work on his vineyard, and so I worked in his vineyard. Uh, he's noticed significant changes in his crop yield, and so that then led to doing uh, his entire business um, matrix um, he was, at the time was doing a, a television show, he's a foodie and he was doing a television show on the Food Network, um, so started doing matrix sessions on the show, the producers, all the people involved with that. Um, that then led to new projects, so I was able to do sessions on the potentiality of new projects with him. Um, I mean, it's body tech can be used for anything, right? I mean, I used to work on his dog, you know, so it's, it can be the dog, the business, the investors in his business, everything. There wasn't anywhere in his world that body talk did not apply. Um, and again, with the theory that we aren't fixing anything, that we're just bringing balance and harmony into what is already, um, truly, where could, would that not apply yeah. in our world. Yeah. And so, Lisa, we can find your bio on the Body Talk website at bodytalksystem.com. And is there another way we can reach out to you for um, sessions or your class teaching schedule? My teaching schedule is online. I'm going to be teaching in Chico at the end of September, uh, the fundamentals course. And um, yeah, at this point, my email is the most reliable way to reach me. Between phone and internet is not always so good here in Costa Rica, uh, especially when I'm on the farm. So, Where else yeah. have your travels taken you, Lisa, through, through the course of teaching and traveling, studying body talk? Do you have any awareness of um, any cultural differences in how people receive body talk or how how to make energy tangible in, in different languages? <laughs> I really have not taught internationally. My I was raising my um, two daughters as a single mom, so my in early years of teaching was that I would only teach within a two-hour uh, time frame away from my home so I could get home in case of an emergency. And so um, I haven't taught internationally. I've taught all over California. Um, and I haven't taught here in Costa Rica yet, although I am building um, a, a base of people interested, particularly in the access course. Um, and hopefully next year in 2016, uh, a fundamentals course. And so how do you describe body talk or define what you're doing when you work with the crops to people in Costa Rica? Or do you find that you don't have to explain yourself to anybody? Yeah, it's very difficult to try to explain here. You know, it's a very um, traditionally 98% Catholic-based uh, culture. And really, they just kind of look at the result and they don't really understand. They know that what I'm doing is different. 
um, but I don't really try to explain it to them because for them, it there's you know a certain level of fear um, that I'm doing weird stuff. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? How long do you think it's going to take for our human consciousness to you know get out of its own way? <laughs> Um, well, I believe strongly in the hundredth monkey uh, theory, and I'm hoping tomorrow. It'll take till tomorrow. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much. I know you're really busy. Thank you for taking the time out of your day there. And before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share? I can't think of anything. Thank you so much for bringing this awareness and, and all these interviews out to the public. You're, you're doing a great job. Lisa, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to connect with you, and we will chat soon. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye Thanks. for now.